I am alive and it is great to be alive. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to mod your melee weapons. I'm doing this video by request so huge shout out to my awesome subs and viewers. I really love making content that you specifically ask for. It's a great way to know that I'm actually helping you out. So I think I'm going to cover three types of weapons in this video for modding status weapons, crit weapons, and then weapons that have great attributes in both crit and status. One thing I just want to note before this video gets too in depth is this video does not account for creativity. Just because you see what I like to do with my weapons, I absolutely encourage you to make your own builds and see what works best for you and helps you have the most fun because this is a video game. So regardless of what's most effective or what other people like, don't forget to try new stuff and always figure out what you enjoy the most. But to start off this video, the most important mod you almost always want to equip on melee weapons is going to be either pressure point uh, or primed. I have the primed variant of pressure point here and I'm going to throw that up there. Uh, the primary damage type for this weapon right now, the lesion, is slash at 75. Throwing on a prime pressure point gets the slash up to 198, which is great. But here is why you want to always have pressure point equipped on your melee weapons. A lot of buffs in this game will increase how much damage you do or benefit off of your raw damage of the weapon. For example, Chroma's Vex Armor ability will allow you to deal extra damage, like four times damage that you would normally do. However, it doesn't take the final stats of your weapon and multiply that by four. No, what it does is it takes the base stats of your weapon. The base stats are the stats of your weapon before mods are taken into account. So it takes the stats of your weapon without any mods equipped and then multiplies that number. So it's not quite as much damage as you're thinking. The reason pressure point is nice is because this is what we call a base damage mod. This increases all of your weapon's damage. It just says melee damage plus 165% melee damage. So this bumps up your base melee damage, which is amazing. So if you have Warframes with, uh, with buff multipliers and stuff like that, this is going to help benefit those. Also, it's just more damage is more damage. Why wouldn't you want to equip this? Prime Fury, I have a lot of Prime mods. If you don't have the Prime version of these, do not worry. There's always the regular version of the mod. Prime Fury is also a fantastic mod because usually attacking faster just means a greater DPS. Prime Fury is almost a necessity on every weapon just because I enjoy it, but it is almost absolutely necessary on weapons that attack really slow, such as great swords or hammers. And another reason you should always put Prime Fury on, just another benefit, is this is a status weapon. So every time I hit the enemy, there is a percent chance that I'm gonna apply a special effect to them. Well, if you're hitting the enemy more times per minute, that is just faster chances that you're going to stack your status procs. Now, what do I mean when I say a status weapon? A status weapon is any weapon that has a higher status chance than it has a crit chance. Now, anything above about 10 to 15 percent, you can work with. If it's any higher than 15 percent, I would consider it good. So this weapon has a 30 percent status chance right off the bat. That is amazingly good. That's that's like top notch. You'll notice its crit chance is 5 percent. That is good garbage. That is what I would consider very bad. So taking those stats into consideration, this is a status weapon. You should, you should honestly not put any crit mods on this thing, but if you do, it should always be your secondary focus. The next thing I want to mention with status weapons is you'll notice they have a status chance. So the status chance of my lesion right now is 30%. We've already covered that, but you can apply mods that increase the status chance, which you are absolutely going to want to do with an elemental weapon. So the Virulent, Volcanic Edge, Voltic Strike, and Vicious Frost mods, these are absolutely amazing because they not only add a status damage type, but they also increase the status chance of your weapon at the same time. These mods I will put on almost every single elemental weapon. So you can see that when I slot this, my status chance goes from 30% to 48%. 48% is already a really good status chance. So essentially with one single status chance increase mod, we now have almost a 50% chance of proccing a status ability for hitting enemies, especially something with a Prime Fury that's gonna be attacking a lot faster. That's pretty good. Another mod I wanna talk about is Weeping Wounds. This increases your status chance by 45% per combo multiplier. So you'll notice that as you're meleeing enemies, 
you'll generate a combo multiplier down at the bottom of your screen that'll say like times 1.5 or times 2 times 3. So essentially for every combo meter that you have right there, this is going to increase your status chance. However, I don't necessarily find this mod incredibly helpful only because I don't normally need it on a status weapon. Because if I switch over to my main lesion build right here, just to show you all real quick, it has a status chance of 84%. It attacks pretty quickly and has an 84% chance of proccing a status on an enemy. It's, it's, it's very easy to apply status effects without using the Weeping Wounds mod. Another reason I don't like the Weeping Wounds mod as much is because with status chance, there is no perk or benefit to getting your status chance over 100%. With crit chance, if you get it over 100%, you gain increased crit damage, which is amazing, but there's nothing like that for status chance, because status chance has nothing to do with damage. It's just your chances to apply a status effect. So Weeping Wounds is really fun to put on weapons that maybe don't have a great status chance if you really need a massive boost to it, but aside from that, it's not really needed. If you are gonna use Weeping Wounds though, I heavily recommend you use Drifting Contact, because Weeping Wounds is heavily reliant on your combo meter and how long you have it. Drifting Contact is gonna increase your status chance, which is great since this is already a status weapon, and it's also gonna increase the duration you can maintain your combo without hitting anybody for 10 whole seconds, which is really nice. A lot of you may be using body count though. It increases your combo duration by 12 seconds, which is an extra two seconds from Drifting Contact, but Drifting Contact not only costs less mod capacity, but it also increases your status chance by 40%, so I find it to be far superior. Okay, we've gotten a lot of the intricate things out of the way for some of the more unique and interesting mods, but one of the main things you want to keep in mind with a status-based weapon is that whichever damage types have the highest damage, your weapon is going to apply those status effects more frequently. So for example, since I have 198 slash and then 159 toxin, and then the other two damage types are really small numbers, that means my weapon is going to apply the toxin and the slash status ability to enemies far more frequently than it will puncture or impact. The reason that's important to keep in mind is because you wanna apply mods that will bump up the highest damage type that you want to apply more often. So if I really want this weapon to deal slash procs to enemies which will bleed them, I need to equip slash mods, such as Buzzkill right here, plus 120% slash damage. That'll get it up to 437 damage, which will ensure that I'm dealing slash procs far more frequently than any of the other three damage types on this weapon. The other important thing I wanna point out with status weapons is you absolutely need to have have a type of enemy that you want to kill in mind. Now everybody has their favorite status types, I know I do, but for example, let's say you really like corrosive damage, well you should make sure you're using it against Grenier typically, because Grenier yellow health barred units have armor and corrosive melts that armor off which takes away some of their damage resistance. So in order to do that, I'm going to combine Virulent Scourge with Voltic Strike, and as you can see here, I now have 318 corrosive damage. Now my corrosive damage is still smaller than my slash damage, which means my weapon is still primarily going to be dealing slash procs, but it will apply corrosive to enemies every now and then, which will melt some of their armor. If you want to deal more corrosive damage, you simply need to bump up the damage number. So if I, for example, apply this shocking touch mod, which is plus 90% electricity and throw that in there, that bumps my corrosive damage up to 556, thus ensuring that corrosive is going to be my primary status effect that I will be afflicting enemies with most most of the time. So really just something to play around with and keep in mind when you're modding status weapons. Uh, try to have the best status chance that you can and pay attention to what status procs you are inflicting on people. Because if you're inflicting magnetic status procs on like the infestors, it's far less helpful than inflicting slash procs or fire, stuff like that. So with status weapons, you want the highest status chance possible. You want a really fast attack speed so that you'll be procking more status effects in a shorter period of time. And you want to pay attention to what statuses you want to proc on the enemy with the given weapon you're using. Before we finish up with status weapons, I want to cover two very important and really cool mods. The first one being Healing Return. This is going to provide you with health when you strike an enemy for every status effect that they have built up on them. Now I want to note this is for every different status effect. So an enemy can't have like 10 slash procs and then give you a ton of health when you hit them. It's only for every different status effect they have. So my healing return for example will heal me 10 health per status type affecting the target. 
So my weapon is capable of dealing four different damage types. So in an ideal situation, though it would be rare because some of these damages have such a small number, if I can inflict an enemy with all four of these damage types with an actual status effect, then I'm gonna be getting 40 health back every time I hit them, which is really cool. So if you're using this mod, it's largely beneficial to have a status weapon that has multiple damage types. Because if you're using a status weapon that only has two damage elements, you know, it's only got slash and corrosive, no impact or puncture, well, it's just decreasing the amount of health you're gonna get back. Now apply those same ideals to this next mod, Condition Overload. So instead of healing you, this mod is gonna give you extra damage for every status type affecting the enemy. In the case of this mod, it is up to 60% more melee damage. That is really, really good. This is a complete game changer for me. I used to be all about crit weapons, all crit weapons are king, but then I got condition overload and it really levels the playing field. So now if I inflict corrosive on an enemy, boom, my weapon does 60% more damage. If I inflict them with a slash proc, boom, that's 120% more melee damage if you combine it with the corrosive. Really a great mod for exponential damage output from elemental weapons. And better yet, if you can get healing return and condition overload, though it's quite expensive on the same weapon, you can have a status weapon that is both very damaging and is going to heal you while you're kicking ass. So this is not really a build that I would use per se. I was kind of just throwing mods up here to show you guys an example. I will show you kind of like what a finished product is here. So I have prime pressure point, prime reach because the Elysian already has a really long reach. So I like it to hit multiple targets, especially if I get surrounded by infested. Prime fury for maximum attack speed, vicious frost, virulent scourge, Healing Return, Condition Overload, and Voltic Strike. So again, that gets me a status chance of 84%, which is fantastic because I'm going to be attacking very fast. And it's even better with the Legion because the Legion actually has a special ability that makes it to where when I apply a status effect, it gains an attack speed boost for a set amount of time. That is why I said this video is not going to be the one all build that you're ever going to use because some weapons have special effects. Some weapons have different attack speeds. You're really going to want to balance the weapon to your own likes and desires, but hopefully this helped you figure out status weapons. Next, we are going to check out crit weapons. And again, I said anything above 15% is considered pretty good. If we look at the Destreza Prime here, it has a critical chance of 24% starting off, which is excellent, and a crit multiplier of 3, which means when you do get a critical hit, it's going to multiply your weapon's damage by 3. That's really good. All right, so I've got an empty loadout here, and one idiotic mistake I made at the beginning of the video, this one should be pretty self-explanatory, always equip a stance mod, always, because it increases your mod capacity. So my mod capacity went from 60 to 70. The, this mod slot up here does not subtract capacity, it adds it. Same with an aura slot on a Warframe. So that one's pretty much a given for a lot of people, but just in case you forgot, I wanted to mention it. Now with crit weapons, it's kind of the same. Prime pressure point or pressure point, whatever, increasing your base damage is always a good thing. Always put that on there. I have i don't think I've ever to this day made a melee build that doesn't include pressure point. And a lot of my weapons kill enemies that are over level 100, so hey, it must be working out pretty well so far. If you look at the Destrezza Prime status chance, it's 18%, which is still pretty good, but we are not going to focus on both crit and status weapons just yet. We're going to focus on crit right now. If you are building a crit weapon, there is a mod that you absolutely need to know about that absolutely needs to be in your life. It is such a beautiful thing. It is called Blood Rush. It increases your critical chance by 165% per combo multiplier. Now, just to clarify, no, that doesn't mean that when you get a stack of your combo, you instantly gain a uh, 180 some percent crit chance. No, no, no. It's 168% chance of your base crit chance. So basically since my crit chance is 24%, once I have one combo, it's going to bump up to around 50 something. So we're going to go ahead and slap Blood Rush on there, but wait, this is entirely reliant on your combo multiplier and your combo goes away really fast. You stop attacking enemies for like three seconds and it's gone, right? Well, that is where that body count or in my preference, the drifting contact mods are really going to come in handy. So we're going to throw up a drifting contact on there so that you have 10 additional seconds to find another enemy to start meleeing so you don't lose all your combo stacks. Now, as for reach, I really don't consider reach a primary concern on crit weapons. I really prefer for them to do as much raw damage as possible per swing. Speaking of damage, you know what's great for damage? DPS mods. So we're going to equip Berserker, which is going to give you 30% attack speed every time you get a critical hit 
which maxes out at 75% attack speed total, and it lasts for 24 seconds. And if you get another critical hit, the timer resets, so you can keep that speed boost for as long as you keep getting critical hits. Stack that with a Fury mod, and you are going to be attacking insanely fast, maybe even faster than you can push the button if you're lucky. The Gladiator mods are fantastic, because every single mod you have equipped gives you another 15% critical chance per combo multiplier. You can see how you can stack up the crit chance really quickly here. But first things first, before you put on any gladiator mods to increase your crit chance, I highly recommend equipping True Steel, because it is just going to give you an extra 60% crit chance, which is a lot for a single mod, so that's really nice. And given that we're building this weapon to have a really high crit chance, it only makes sense to put Organ Shatter on there, because that's going to increase your critical damage by 90%. So you'll notice right now when I get a critical hit, it increases my weapon damage by three times. When we put Organ Shatter on there, it is going to increase our crit multiplier to 5.7. That is very nice. Now, I haven't polarized this thing a whole lot, so I can't make like the most amazing crit build that I've ever made on this weapon. This is just for example purposes, but you'll notice we now have a crit multiplier of 5.7, 38.4% critical chance, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but I'll go ahead and take us into the simulacrum and you can see just how quickly your crit chance starts building up once you get combo multipliers. All right, so I am here in the simulacrum and I'm gonna spawn an elite Lancer at level 100 just so you can see how fast the status chance and the crit multiplier really shreds the target. So as you can see here, I'm not critting very often, but then all of a sudden I'm critting every single hit just about and even getting orange crits, which means my crit chance was over 100% and I was dealing extra damage. As you can see there, with a simple crit build with almost no increase in damage mods, uh, we were able to almost instantly kill a level 100 enemy. And again, this is not even one of my best crit weapons right now. So I have no doubt that if you guys apply that same logic to your own weapons with higher mod capacity, you're going to be even more devastating. All right, the last weapon type I want to touch on is a weapon that has both good status and critical chance. So for that example, I'm using the Nakana Prime, which has a 20% status chance and a 20% crit chance. So what's beautiful about this weapon is you can build it to be either status, you can make it a decent crit weapon with like Berserker, Attack Speed, and Crit Chance Increase mods, or you can deal tons of Slash procs. Or what's even better to try and do with weapons that have both good crit and status is take advantage of both of those. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm showing you this on the Nakana Prime because this is the best example I have found of successfully pulling the most crit and status out of the same weapon at the same time. So you'll notice I've got the base increase in damage, which is fantastic. You're going to want that. Increase attack speed, always a good thing. Again, with DPS, which which is why we've got Berserker on here so that our attack speed is going to get even higher as we're critting the enemy. And we are going to crit the enemy a lot more often than you think because I've got this Blood Rush mod on here and I've got Drifting Contact to make sure I don't lose my combo multiplier so I can work my crit chance up as much as I need to. But to get even crazier, not only do I have Blood Rush, which benefits largely from your combo multiplier, I have Weeping Wounds on the exact same weapon. So as my combo multiplier gets higher, it's going to both increase my crit chance and my status chance dramatically. Dramatically. Now what boosts that even further is I have Relentless Combination. So there is a guaranteed 100% chance to increase my melee combo counter when slash status deals damage. So when I apply an enemy with a slash status proc, whenever they tick bleed damage, it's going to increase and add to the melee strikes from my combo multiplier, which helps me build that combo multiplier up faster. And to top it all off, icing on the cake, I've got Condition Overload. This one was really just for fun because I wanted to deal extra damage damage to enemies just for having bleed procs on them, which this build specifies in doing. So again, it looks like I only have a 20% crit chance and a 28% status chance, so you might think initially this build is garbage. But uh, I can assure you that when I start <laughs> showcasing this thing here in a sec, you are going to think far from it. So as you can see, I not only have really good crit, but also status, and he's dead before I can hardly start explaining what's going on, and that's a level 100 enemy. The other thing I want to point out as to why weapons with crit chance and status chance are really fun to play around with is because remember those bonus damage multipliers I talked about earlier? Well, whenever you deal a slash status effect, which bleeds the enemy, it only bleeds them based off of your base slash damage. So what's great about a crit weapon is the slash damage that you apply to enemies that causes them to bleed every second can actually be boosted by the crit multiplier. So if you hit the enemy with a strike that gives them a bleed status effect, but it was a critical hit, they're going to take more bleed damage per second because it was a critical hit. So it kind of crits the slash damage they take. And one mod that I want to point out is Spoiled Strike because this is a matter of flavor perhaps for me, but I recommend almost never putting this mod on a weapon 
it increases your base damage, but it also decreases your attack speed. And generally, in a lot of my testing, I just don't find it enjoyable. I don't like swinging a weapon that feels really heavy and slow. Also, it's kind of like, why have increased damage if I can just attack faster and kill the enemy quicker? And having a slower attack speed is not great for status weapons either, so I avoid this mod a lot of the time. But if you're going solely for base damage, which I have tried before, just the highest base damage, not worrying as much about crit and status, you can do that, but the results are not nearly as satisfying. But again, before I end this video, I want to emphasize so heavily that this is not going to be your Bible for modding melee weapons. Do your own thing. I still, to this day, had a really hard time making this video, even though I've been playing Warframe for like five plus years, is because I mod every single weapon individually. I, I don't just have like a rule set I follow. I tried to give you some tips in here, but take every weapon into account for itself. Look at what its statuses are, look at what damage types it has, look at its crit chance, its multipliers, and play around with the weapon. The biggest advice I can give you is come in here and unlock the simulacrum and test your melee builds to see if they're as good as you think they might be. Because sometimes you're right and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. That bleed critical chance and high status bleed chance Nakana build I just showed off to you, I actually thought was going to be a silly idea. I was just testing it, messing around with stuff because I was bored. And it ended up being super effective and now it's one of my favorite weapons to use. So again, this video was kind of hard for me to make because I don't believe in just, you know, copy and pasting on every weapon that you own. Uh, I, I really like to take every weapon into account, how it feels, its weapon type, its attack speeds that it has on its own. But uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. Nobody's perfect, and uh, I don't ever go scripted, so if I sounded all over the place, I apologize, but I like talking to you guys as if I'm just like actually talking to somebody. So hopefully this video was helpful. Drop a comment or a like if you enjoyed it. That'll let me know I didn't completely screw it all up, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.